Hypography is everywhere. It's here. It tells us what to do, what not to do, where to wash our stuff, how to wash our stuff. Without it, graphic design is just shapes and colors. So I'm gonna talk about the advanced parts of typography, the X height, the crossbars, and the descenders. No, 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 not that advanced. I'm talking advice you can use to improve your website right now. I'm not talking about that advanced designer stuff. I'm not Pangram Pangram. We'll deal with that another time. I'm going to kick it off with Rayloom's site builder page. I already generated a site map for an e-commerce website that sells high-end, carbon-negative modern furniture. I'm limiting it to seven pages, so we can see the large changes happening all at once. You can, however, do as many as you want. From there, I let it generate seven pages as wireframes. This is the best part about Site Builder. I can quickly generate every page in seconds just to pitch to clients. Even better, Reloom already provides a type scale. That's actually my first piece of advice. Find a type scale, steal that type scale, and then use that type scale. There are designers out there spending way more time on this than you. Leverage what you know and leave the rest to the experts. Since we've already got our type scale, we don't have to start fresh. Instead, what we're gonna talk about is choosing a typeface. If you wanna know where to get good typefaces, check the links below. I included some in the description. For now, here's a little mood board I whipped up to show off the vibe of what we're going for. We're gonna pretend our customer base for this site is rich as hell. This is what some of their homes look like. What are some of the adjectives we can use to describe the feeling? Don't worry, I'm going somewhere with this. Warm, calming, minimalist, peaceful, earthy, got a lot of earth tones, geometric, natural, those are the descriptors that we're going to use to help us choose the typeface. I'm going to stick to Pangram Pangram so that we don't get too sidetracked on choosing type, but you choose whatever you want from your favorite foundry. One of my favorite ways to set type rapidly is to just take a piece of your UI and set the type right on there. It'll give you an immediate sense of how it'll look in the final design. For this, I disconnected the components and removed the shared text style that comes with the UI kit. It'll be easier for us to play around that way. Our goal here is to just pick some type not set it. I've already done the work and added a bunch of typefaces from Pangram Pangram, and I've split them into two groups, one serif and the other sans serif. If we use our descriptor words to look for what we want, I think we can immediately rule out the serifs. We're looking for something calming and geometric, not pointy or bookish, but migra italic is pretty nice. So we'll just keep that in mind. It has the advantage of having an expensive look while being the polar opposite to our descriptor words, something that can sometimes work in our favor to create contrast. I'm gonna go through all the fonts rapid fire and tell you why I chose them or didn't choose them. Let's go. PP Mori was chosen because it has some of the descriptors that we like. PP Agrandir here maybe feels a little too playful with the swoops on the T. I don't really like this old fashioned A here. This G descender is really long. New Montreal, always a banger. PP Formula looks a little too tall. I don't really like this notch here. We want something geometric and warm, something that feels almost natural. And this doesn't feel like that. It feels very technical. Then you've got Object Sans. This one's pretty close. But I think that the comma here is really weird. Some of the forms here are a little too rounded for me, and I'm not really looking for that. Fraction Sans, again, it looks a little too technical, almost like something you'd find on a computer or technical drawings. I don't really like the T here. It feels very square. With Gatwick, obviously that looks just absolutely silly. It looks like a sans serif that wants to be a serif really badly, and it's just too wide. Gosha Sans, uh, this one's pretty cool. It kind of matches some of the descriptors that we're looking for. The only problem is that it looks a little too Eastern Europe um, for this type of look. Monument Extended, same issue as Gatwick. It's slightly too wide, it's too thick, and some of the letters are a little too playful. And then New Machina. Again, this has sort of a cyberpunk feel to it. A lot of the letters are cut. They have this grotesque um, ink trap in some of these things, and that's not really what we're looking for either. With the serifs, I don't even have to go over these because we already ruled them out, except for Migra. I'm gonna keep that one in mind. So now that I've narrowed it down to Migra, Montreal, and Mori, we can choose a complementary typeface for our paragraphs and buttons. We can go one of two routes. We can pair each of them with their opposite, a sans serif with a serif, and vice versa, or we can pair them with their own family. With Migra, we can't do that because it doesn't read well at smaller sizes with long line lengths. It's fine for single words and short phrases. Montreal is ideal for this though. 
Unfortunately for Montreal, it's a really standard sans serif. So maybe we pair it with something more opinionated and let the headings do the talking. Fortunately, Pangram Pangram just came out with a new monospace variant for New Montreal that works perfectly for this. It lives within the same family, so we know it'll pair well, and it's different enough from the headings to stand on its own. If we go back to our keywords, these pairings on both sides work perfectly for us. They're warm, calming, minimalist, peaceful, earthy, geometric, and natural. I like them both too much. No problem, we'll pair them together. Quick tip before moving on. Pairing a typeface can be really difficult. There's an endless number of them. My advice for you is sticking to a foundry that is tried and true, like Grilly Type or Florian Karsten, and stay away from larger websites like defont.com. Okay, let's start making those changes to our style guide. If it seems like we wasted a lot of time in the beginning half, you'd be wrong. That whole setup saved us more time than trying to set up our type here. Why? Because changing the shared text on a style guide takes time. It has to propagate across every single page, and you're gonna be slowed down by your own inability to choose and the snail pace of forcing the program to change every single instance. I like to start by setting the headings. It's likely the first thing that people see and the only thing that they'll read. I mentioned this in my site builder breakdown, link in description, but most people coming to your site won't read much of it, if any of it. So make it easy to read. We're gonna change the headings in the style guide and then modify on our working page. Changing them all at once in the style guide will let us select all the headings, but working on the page will let us dive deeper. Now that we've got all of our headings in place, we can do line heights. It's one of the first things that I do. Line heights should be inversely proportionate to the size of the type. So if your headings are big, the line height will be smaller, usually 100% or below. And the smaller the size, the bigger the line height. So tighten your line height. I'm gonna do 110% for the H1 and for the H2, same thing, 110%. Now let's do the letter spacing. Usually when a type designer is creating the space between each character, it's done with universality in mind. They want this to be usable in its default state, no matter where it's placed. That's like saying one cut of denim is perfect for everybody. We're gonna tighten up the letter spacing of the headlines to make them look a little less like a paragraph to read and more like a piece of graphic design to be enjoyed. Now let's hit the paragraphs. Paragraphs are tricky because Line height and container width are everything. There are a few different sizes in this mockup that we'll style, but my rule of thumb generally is to start with 16 pixels and work your way up. You might find that you only need one or two more, bigger or smaller, but that constraint will take you a long way. Just like with headings, I'm gonna change all the paragraphs at once. And for the sake of time, I'm only going to change a few of the weights. Okay, now that they're all Montreal mono, let's focus on readability. We want the line height to be larger than 100% because our type is getting smaller. You're usually safe anywhere from 1.3 to 1.5. That's 130% to 150%. You want to be able to read without having to find the next line. We want our space to breathe, but we also don't want a gap that's as big as the text itself. Somewhere in the middle. Now that that's set, let's talk about letter spacing. Unlike headlines, usually the letter spacing default is perfect as is. In the case of this monospace variant, the width of each character is actually identical. Usually this font is reserved for more technical writing. You can easily identify the difference between code and natural language text, but we aren't writing code here. So let's make it look a lot more like natural language and tighten it up. I like negative 4% here. Makes it feel more like a paragraph and less like technical writing. One of the most common mistakes I see on websites is paragraph line length. The Reloom UI kit doesn't have this issue, thankfully, but it's all dependent on the size of the character in the font. You wanna have around 50 to 75 characters per line. The blog is the one spot this needs to be adjusted. So let's shrink down the width until we reach that number. Right now, we have around 74 characters. So we're just gonna reduce this a little bit. There we go. That looks far more readable. And if you don't want to make your column thinner, you can always make your font larger. Just remember that the point is to be able to read type, not just make it look nice. Now it's time to do 
do the, do the eyebrows. Do you, you know, talk about the eyebrows or as Google calls them overlines. They're the little text above our headings that sums up the content in a single word or two. Imagine if the paragraph is the entire description and the heading is the summary for that paragraph, the eyebrow is the summary for the heading. Just like before, the text is even smaller. So we need a larger line height, right? Wrong. This will never be multiple lines. It's always going to be one or two words. So let's make the line height 100% so that the spacing below it is always correct. We'll never have to account for some invisible margin. Just like a heading, we can make this stand out more. We don't want it to look like a paragraph and we don't want it to compete with the heading. We want it to complement the heading. I'm gonna make it all caps to differentiate it and maybe increase the weight so that it's more like a heading. Instead of decreasing the letter spacing, I'm gonna increase it. When the characters are turned into all caps, it's harder to visually parse each character, so we want more spacing to tell them apart. Okay, that looks good. We're not really talking about color in this walkthrough because this is all about the basics of typography. But one way to increase contrast in a type scale is by introducing lighter text for paragraphs and heavier text for headings. For paragraphs, watch what happens when I set the opacity to 64%. Immediately, we've created texture using only two colors. This page has depth now. Try testing this with other levels of black before you add color to the page. But remember, contrast is important. Make sure the color contrast stays above 4.5 to 1. You can check this using a color contrast checker like Start that's built into a Figma plugin. Or if you're on a Mac, there's a really great app that lives in the menu bar called Contrast. There's so much more we can cover about typography. We're barely scratching the surface here. But I feel like with these tips, you can go a long way with making your content look and read better. Now get out there and set your own website's type. I can't do everything for you. If you liked what you learned in this video, give it a like. If you didn't like what you learned, still give it a like. I need to buy more typefaces and it's only one click for you. Until I see you again, good luck.